What's going on guys and welcome to this video. Today's video is basically a response to a post that I did about a week ago on Instagram. It was a reflection shot of the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. And in that photo, I basically said, let me look at it real quick. Reflections are just the best. Even if this one is not real and created in post, I still love the effect this creates. Let me know if you want me to make a tutorial about it. And based on the feedback that I got from you guys, a lot of people wanted me to make a little tutorial about it. So this one should be a quick one because it is actually pretty easy and fast, at least the way I did it. If you end up using this technique on your photo, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see how your shot came out. Now I do want to mention that this is not an in-depth tutorial where I go over every little detail. I just want to show you how you can create this reflection or mirroring effect in Adobe Photoshop within a couple of minutes. Now by no means is this perfect. There are way more ways to do this and also you can go way more in depth and make it look even more realistic in whatever you think is realistic. Um, in this scenario, if you see the before photo and then I'll show you the after, you're probably going to notice that this would never be able to exist this way. But when it comes to art, it's always about taste. Everybody has a different taste and the beauty lays in the eyes of the beholder, right? So without further ado, let's jump into Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop and let's edit this photo together. Shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes and I'll show you how I created this type of style or this composite image. All right, so I'm starting out in Lightroom and I'm going to give this photo a little bit of a look. Once I have the look, I bring it into Photoshop. And what I like to do there is bring in another image because I'm going to copy this image, bring it into the other one. And from there, I'm going to select to mirror this one vertically. And then I will copy it and paste it basically back into the other image. Go to opacity, reduce that so that the photo that's underneath is showing. And now I'm going to line the photo up so it creates a perfect mirroring effect. Once that is accomplished, I am bringing the opacity back to 100% and I'm going to switch the layer so that the layer that I was just adjusting is now at the bottom and creating a layer mask and using the brush tool to reveal the photo that is hiding underneath to create that perfect reflection. I'm using the bigger brush here to be able to get the bigger surfaces done and then I'm making the brush smaller to be able to get more of the details that are close to the edges. Now you can go far into detail here as much as you like it. The more emphasis you put on the edges and the cleaner you make them, the cleaner your photo is going to look in the end and the more realistic it's going to appear. Now, of course, it's different for every photo. For some, it's going to be easier and for some, it's going to be a little more tricky. But the cleaner you make the photo, the better it's going to look. So I cleaned up all the edges. I'm happy the way it looks. Now I do want to add a blur to the reflection just to sell it a little more and make it appear a little more realistic. For that, I'm going to filter, blur and motion blur. And I'm going to keep the direction of the blur the way it is in this case. Here it is from left to right. Then I'm going to add the strength to my liking here. You can experiment on how much you want that effect to appear. And once that's done, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to save this whole thing and bring it back into Lightroom. Now I'm going to add some finishing touches, which includes a gradient filter that I'm going to put over the reflection that we just created. Because when you see a real reflection in person, they always appear darker and more contrasty and we want to get as close as we can to that effect. Once that's done, I'm using a radial filter. I'm going to apply that over the whole image, invert it and darken it up so I can get a vignette effect and darken up the corners and draw the attention to the middle of the photo. 
Additionally, I'm adding another radio filter to brighten up the middle a little more and give a little more emphasis on that middle part, which is the subject. After I'm done with that, I'm going to the tone curve and add some finishing touches as well. Now, when it comes to the tone curve, small adjustments have a really big impact. So depending on the look you're going for, less can be more in this case. Now I'm noticing that the lights are still a little on the yellow side and I prefer to have them more on the orange side. So I'm doing some adjustments to the hue and saturation and that should bring out some more of the orange in this photo. Now I'm just doing some final adjustments and then I'm going to crop this image. In this case, I'm cropping it to a four by five because that's what I like to use for my Instagram posts. But of course you can do that to your liking. All right, and that's the final image. This is the before and this is the after. Now you can see there is a drastic difference and one is more captivating than the other one just because it looks so surreal, I guess. Uh, but for me, that's a good thing. And as I mentioned before, it's always a taste thing. Um, and some people are going to like this. Some people are more drawn to uh, this photo. But in the end, it always comes down to what you prefer and that's exactly how it's supposed to be because the world would be such a boring place if there would be just one right thing and the rest would be wrong. All right, with that being said, this concludes this video. If you wanna try this out, I would love to see your images. This is my Instagram account. Tag me in your photo and I would love to give you some feedback on it. You can also send it to my DMs. I'm stoked to see what you do with it. Put down in the comments below if you have any questions and also if you wanna share more tips uh, with the community. With that being said, I will see you in the next one and I hope you have a wonderful day.